Cloud native is a term that gets used in lots of different ways, but what does it mean to the team at Optiva? Well, to find out, I'm talking with Matt Halligan, CTO at the cloud native billing, charging, and revenue management software developer. Matt, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, so uh, everyone seems to have a different understanding of the terms cloud versus cloud native, cloud oriented, and, and many more iterations. But what is your definition of cloud native? Yeah, interesting question, Ray. And you know what? You think it's a simple question to answer, uh, especially when cloud has been around for so long. But um, even, even when I talk to my own team, vendors, partners, peers, you know, you get such a variance in, in uh, answers to kind of what is cloud native and what is a cloud native architecture. Um, one anecdotally I'll kind of give you as an answer is, I hear a lot of people say, well, that's when your application runs in the public cloud. And I kind of roll my eyes at that a little bit because it's completely not that. For me, you know, a cloud native architecture is one that actually is ironically cloud agnostic. And what I mean by that is it can run in any cloud. Um, it needs to basically take advantage of the features and functions that the cloud solutions offer, which is really all about elasticity, dynamic scaling in and out. You know, one of the challenges where you need to be cloud uh, uh, native is resiliency of your application in a non-resilient ecosystem. Because uh, unfortunately, the cloud is not five nines. It provides the capabilities for your application to be five nines. And that's a fundamental thing when we're in the telco space. The other thing, you know, was really important around cloud native architecture is, well, I use the traditional term modularity. Uh, maybe other people would term it as microservices in the modern day, but really it's about the separation or isolation of your feature function and the ability to take advantage of things like, you know, uh, canary upgrades, uh, the ability to scale horizontally on a per function basis. Um, other thing fundamental in cloud native architecture, continuous integration and continuous deployment. Not a new term, but in Tiva we've extended it to also call, to engage continuous testing. So you close that whole uh, feedback loop cycle. Continuous integration, build, deploy, fast, go to market. Um, the other thing, you know, that I think is an interesting trend as well in cloud native architecture and take advantage of is when you talk with the hyperscalers, there's opportunities for you to have synergies, but you don't want to couple yourself too much and be basically exclusive to a single public cloud offering. But taking advantage of the services that those, cloud, those public clouds offer and in Optiva, we use a lot of AIML technology as we basically try to advance and add value to our solution. So the kind of whole concept of one plus one is something more than two. Um, now, I'll, I'll make another comment on cloud native architecture. Of course, you know, the tech has moved on, but I have to give kudos to the open source community. They have really pushed quite heavily on developing and evolving frameworks that companies like Optiva can take advantage of. The unfortunate element of that is what I would say is a lot of the telco vendors, because they built proprietary solutions in the past and they invested a huge amount, amount in that proprietary solutions, they tended to go into a lift and shift model, okay, and put a rubber stamp of cloud native against it. So they really aren't going to realize the benefits of a cloud native architecture itself. The side effect of that, uh, and maybe we'll talk a little bit later about it, is it creates a level of skepticism in the industry on really how valuable cloud native is. Uh, I'll give you a few, a few examples. The examples being they can't scale horizontally. They don't use lightweight monitoring modern open telemetry stacks. Um, they're not elastic. They haven't got the benefit of using the comp the capabilities of the cloud, like you know, load balancing service endpoints. These all drive basically inefficiencies on them realizing the benefit of the actual cloud. And uh, let's remember the, co the whole premise of cloud native architecture from my perspective is driving total cost of ownership, both on the operational side, as well as actually the footprint of your application. Okay, lo lots of great points there, Matt. Thanks very much. Um, now, uh, what is the advantage of cloud native architecture and the associated technologies if a company is operating on premises or even in their own private cloud? Yeah, so kind of building on what we chatted about a little bit earlier, from my perspective, um, you know, private cloud and public cloud don't dictate the benefits of a cloud native architecture and you get a huge amount of overlap on it. Um, 
And I, I will emphasize again, a good application solution should be agnostic to whether it's private or public cloud. Now there are nuances to that. Um, and I think the telco space is more akin, especially on the mobile network operators, towards the private cloud, at least in their evolution and their journey. And remember, the cloud is a journey for the, for the telcos. It's not a one-stop shop and they will evolve over time. Um, on the private cloud side, for me, you know, the, the consideration and the benefit it gives is for continuous workloads, it gives an economics in many scenarios that's, that outweighs the public cloud. You still get the benefit of continuous deploy, uh, continuous tests, so your operational efficiencies are, are significant. You get better TCO because you can scale down and you can also scale up. The one thing that the private cloud cha is challenged with, where the public cloud has a significant benefit, is that elasticity, on-demand resources. Of course, in a private cloud, you need to kind of walk in, build out your, your data center and do that investment. In the public cloud, the hyperscalers have that done upfront. Uh, and that's why we also promote sometimes it's not one or the other. It can be the concept of a hybrid architecture as well. Um, so, you know, I think, I think that is it in summary. For me, it's not about private or public. It's more about what fits the needs of the actual operator and what are they trying to solve from a business perspective. Okay. But, uh, I mean, do the public cloud providers have a, a natural advantage when it comes to cloud native technology? Uh, and is this a challenge for you in your partnership with the likes of Google Cloud and uh, Microsoft Azure? So do they have an advantage? 100% because this is their bread and butter. This is what they've been doing. This is their back garden. And this is what they are basically excelling at. Is it a, is it a challenge? Not at all. It's actually a complete compliment. For us, you know, and we, let's take Google as an example, who's a significant partner for Optiva. We've been working with Google, evolving our application, working with them to understand the tooling and techniques that they've used that we can take advantage of. Um, and and in, in return, basically, uh, we've been benefiting them because we're running our application as a workload on their resource, taking advantage of the synergies that we can get, the efficiencies we can drive, so that as a partnership, we can go to the market where the Google Plus Optiva offering uh, that doesn't just provide the BSS as an application running on top of the, uh, the Google platform, but also some other synergies that are interesting where we integrate into their AI ML system and into their, their uh, data lake where we can actually introduce other monetization opportunities. So net net for me, the hyperscalers um, are, are a positive influence for application vendors such as Optiva. They're not a threat, they're an opportunity. In, in addition, I think it's a warm welcome that the telcos are embracing the hyperscalers. They see the value that they bring. Um, and it's not exclusive. You know, in many of our engagements, we have hybrid architectures where we have private cloud and we have public cloud deployments side by side. Yeah, absolutely. See uh, a lot of those uh, different models uh, as the telcos uh, evolve their cloud strategies. Um, but there's still a long way to go for the network operators. Uh, so what are the biggest challenges that you see for telcos that recognize the value of cloud native, but who don't see a reasonable or clear path to get there? Yeah, so I kind of, as we talked about a bit earlier, it's a journey. And I think you need to understand with your customer, where are they on that journey? Because depending on where they are, they have different needs and you know, they have different ways that we can help address it. Um, and there's a multiple set of barriers uh, in that journey. Um, I think a big question is their maturity and their readiness to adopt it. Um, and, and it's not purely just technical. I think one of the fundamental challenges I've seen in the past has been cultural and skill base. Um, um, and as I look at it, you know, and this is kind of where you know, I think we need to stop thinking about vendor customer and start thinking about partnership. And I think the telcos are looking for partners that help them navigate uh, this journey, uh, especially this cloud journey. Challenge, challenge number one, of course, is skill set. A lot of the operators that uh, we're engaging with, they don't truly know the cloud, especially the more modernized container based cloud solutions. And they're looking for guidance. They also have challenges on how they upskill their team and timing is a challenge for them. 
they have the motivation to do it, but maybe it doesn't hit some of their business timescales. The way we have tried to help solve this is in Optiva, we've built our own DevOps team. And we engage giving the customer the opportunity that we will build the cloud for them. We will deploy our application as the pilot application on that cloud. And when they're ready and they feel capable and confident, they can take over that cloud and deploy other applications alongside our application. So giving them the time and opportunity to upskill their own staff and workforce. And that creates an unthreatened type engagement with the actual uh, customer, our partner. On the flip side of that, there is also political challenges. Of course, the cloud offers a lot of opportunity and efficiency and streamlining and optimization. That optimization ultimately could be seen as a threat for jobs. And that is, that is an ongoing discussion and, and challenge we have with some of the departments where they feel their job is to maintain the existing bare metal infrastructure environment. If they definitely go to a public cloud, they see that, that uh, workload moving away from them. Um, and to be honest, from our perspective, that's just the nature of something that we have to promote as that's an efficiency for the business itself. And we just have to navigate around that headwind. Um, for me, the private cloud is better, you know, a better targeted as an MNO um, opportunity. And what I mean by that is MNOs have large incumbency, large transaction rates, um, they have continuous workloads, so the economics generally suit better for them uh, to run their main systems on the private cloud. Interestingly, if you look at the MVNO market, the MVNO market is far better suited for the public cloud. And why is that? Because a lot of the greenfield MVNOs start with zero customers. So they want a minimum risk uh, entry opportunity for their business. So they want a pay as you grow type model. The public cloud with its elasticity capabilities really it, uh, it makes it attractive and offers that true SaaS kind of engagement model. Okay, excellent, Matt. Well, uh, obviously lots of things for the operators to think about there, but it does feel like that they're getting to grips with this and, and really starting to do quite a lot in terms of their workforces and their in-house skills. So uh, great to hear your insights on cloud native uh, today, Matt. Uh, thanks very much for joining us and look forward to chatting with you again in the future. My pleasure. Have a great day.